other switchheads, welcome back. Kanan here as usual, and we're going to take a gander at Syndrome. Which happens to be another FPS shooter horror game with, well, light puzzling elements, whatever that means. Cast your mind back to the Dead Space games, where kind of this genre peaked in a way. And it really did make me wonder whether Syndrome could cast me back to them days. But just before we find out the answer to that nugget, why not hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying any of my content and want more? So let's see how this mediocre PC port fares on the Switch. I mean, what could go wrong? I think it's safe to say that a lot of us still yearn for a Dead Space port, or a new one for that matter. In fact, I'm pretty sure they're in the works for doing one of those. But until then, Syndrome tries to fill that gap. And using some of those key points needed for this challenge, we, the player, wake up from cryosleep only to find you're alone and some crazy shit's gone down. Although I have to admit, given kudos on the fact that they didn't use the old memory loss in this one. Right, let's see. You got your health and stamina bar, of which runs down as you, well, run around. Your stamina bar goes down, not your health. That goes down whenever you get hit by shit. Next, we have the map. Oh, look, it's a map. Yay. Tick that one off the list. We have a run, jump, and crouch. Tick, tick, tick. <laughs> Even a point where you have to go and stick your hand in something to save the game. We are actually in 2022, so I'm not quite sure why there aren't autosaves. Even if this is a port of a game that's been out for, I believe, five years on the PC. And I'll give you a hint, it wasn't very well received there either. You have a weapon tool that you can use during the game to, well, open things up and the like, and actual weapons, shooty shooty things. As you progress through the game, you unlock sections via like a lift, if you like, which you can go around and it unlocks at levels as you progress. Yay, an elevator. It really is just as simple as that. Click and then you wait for a while. Is that a tick or isn't it? Uh, I'm going to add it anyway. There's a sneaking mechanic, which I did actually kind of like, and I kind of felt it was pretty decent-ish and it enabled you to just duck down to the ground in one motion and be able to sort of like walk across the floor kind of you know kneeling and wandering forward slowly with literally one button touch although this would have felt a hell of a lot better had the AI had a little less clairvoyance-ness about them Although I have to admit that some of the actual enemies you could just run round. In fact, I kind of cornered myself and there was a table in the room and I kind of like just ran round the table and then out the other way and they followed me. Yeah. Okay, so what the heck is up with that inventory system? Oh yeah, this is actually made for mouse and keyboard. Okay, the actual inventory is really bad because you can't use the d-pad you have to use the thumbstick and basically the outside world keeps going so if you're in the middle of a fight and you run away to i don't know heal and you bring yourself down like this you have to actually bring yourself down to actually heal yourself here which is rather annoying and sometimes by mistake you drop it on the floor which isn't very useful either I know and I realise some people are saying, oh, but it's realistic. It, it really isn't. Honestly, it's not. I mean, literally, this guy does not deserve to live if he can't even get something out of his pocket or his backpack whilst moving. I suppose whilst we're actually on the negatives of the game, I might as well mention the fact that there is a lot of backtracking and boring walking doing nothing. Well, if you enjoy empty corridors with, well, not literally empty, but you get what I mean. This sort of thing is just boring. On and on and on. Oh, you go for ages without seeing anything. There's the environmental hazards. Okay, look. Keep you on your toes. Keep it interesting. Wish. More corridors. Yay. Oh, dark corridor. Yay, some more dark corridors. 
Yay. Adding to that, the occasional frame rate dip when there's lots of things going on on the screen and the combat system having no weight to it and kind of feeling a bit broken as well as I mentioned before. And just shooting back slightly, if I may, I have wrote down the fact that you wander around doing nothing several times in my notes and trust me, this started to get a little bit boring and the actual gameplay started breaking down once you figured out that you can just run past certain monsters and this is even worse when you're actually going through sections multiple times, you just run past them because, you know, they weren't anything really bad. In fact, at times I found the environmental hazards worse than actually the creatures. There were a couple of jump scares that kind of worked, kind of didn't, but even this I felt got a little bit samey and boring. The gameplay, in a nutshell, was kind of almost a loop. Find a code, run to corridor, find a key, run to where you need to use these items or code, read through a load of tablets in order to, well, sometimes get the code or information, or just the story run through hollows of corridors to turn things on, switch things, find things, do things. And while that actually sounds like it possibly could be quite decent, it really wasn't. And you'd be letting out a big sigh as you realise that you'd have to rinse and repeat most of these actual tasks. And that elevator I mentioned, well, basically every time you go in the elevator to go somewhere, you had to wait 30 seconds or a little bit more each time to continue the game and this really didn't help as a lot of times I was losing the will to actually carry on with the game. As for the looks of Syndrome, well on the Switch it looked quite nice, had some nice effects but as I said before it did lag a small amount. Oh and I had my old nemesis of the uh, well in handheld writing was too small etc. As for that sound, well, it had some quite spooky-ish environmental sounds. It had speech for the most of it, interacting with different characters that popped up on the screen but obviously were somewhere else communicating with you. And I kind of felt this was actually quite half-decently done. Oh, and for an FPS horror game, the way they introduced the first creature that you meet was, well, for want of a word, really, really crappily done. Is that one word? I don't know. Look, it's not the worst game I've ever played of this genre, but it's certainly not the best I've played of this genre. The good. Full speech in the actual interaction between the characters, and I'm glad they put that in there, as I would not have lasted as long as I did if it was not. It had a okay-ish beginning, but an actual surprising end to it. I did enjoy the sneaking mechanic and the way they did it, and also the fact that you can pick up bottles and the like and throw them in a direction and it's meant to meant to distract the creatures and you can sneak past them and do things and all. Which in parts did work and in other parts kind of didn't. And that brings me nicely to the bad. <laughs> Little annoying those loading times. The bat tracking is also very annoying. The rinse and repeatness of the actual gameplay was annoying. For me, it had a little bit of a lag to it, and I found the gameplay a little bit dull. There's been many a FPS horror game that has tried to emulate the success of Dead Space, and many have failed. And Syndrome is no exception, with too much walking around, doing nothing, and backtracking to previous areas, I struggled to keep going as I felt I was going as insane as the main character. And with that, it is such a shame that I have to give it a 2 plus out of 5. But for me, it really did not do what I needed it to. And so, whilst we go in search of that alternative for you, why not hit that like button, it really does help the channel, and also subscribe, especially if you've made it this far, or if you just like to watch my content in general, I would really appreciate if you did that for me. And as for that alternative I hear you cry, well today it's going to be Alien Isolation, which is meant to be a better game in every single way to Syndrome. And heck, it's inspired by the 1979 film Alien. So what more can I say? 
And with that, if you've got any comments on Syndrome at all, leave them down in the comments because that's obviously where they belong. And you can also come and chat with me in our community Discord. Link is down below because life is better when we switch together.